Esteemed colleagues, good afternoon, good evening. We are happy to welcome all of you here at the session which has social word social two times in the title of it. And we are very much surprised that uh, it um, receives uh, so much interest uh, and attention because, you know, the, the room is full. And Mr. Silanov's session, Mr. Gol Ms. Golikova, Mr. Makarov previous session, they discussed uh, the decrees of the president and execution of the decree decrees and the socio-economic agenda and they decided not to talk about money first of all because uh, yes with money you can do everything but uh, you should try and make things without money that's why uh, in the theme social we will also talk a lot about it uh, about social entrepreneurship uh, and we have a question mark in this in the subject of our session. Is it a social mobility means for our young people? So we have three hashtags in this theme, social entrepreneurship. This is quite new term for us. Uh, it is about 10 years old. Uh, it is quite ambiguous, uh, and we should think about how we should understand it, and can entrepreneurship be social? Another thing, social lift, social mobility means what is it, and why, what is what are the differences with career ladder? And uh, another thing, uh, young people, so the our law says that young people are is the group of 13 14 years of age plus so we will all we will discuss all these things now i'm Vyacheslav Shoptenko. i'm director for institute of organizational management development and strategic initiatives of ranepa but we are also doing uh, creating an accelerator of social initiatives for the recent six years and from our perspective this is a working model effective model of um, how involving youngsters into social social projects, social entrepreneurship in a very wide sense of this word. So we are not only talking about commercial success of these things. It should be projects uh, with financial sustainability. So NGOs are also about social entrepreneurship because they do things, they make projects in social sphere and they are financially sustainable. So our experience of involving about 1,000 young people implementing 100 projects every year shows us that social entrepreneurship can really be a social a means of social mobility for young people so i would like to introduce our today's speakers who who joined us here today for the panel and are ready to speak about our subject today. Alexei Komisarov, uh, head of uh, the organization Russia, the Country of Opportunities, and pro rector of uh, the Higher School of um, State Management, Ranepa. Alexander Bugaev, head of federal agency for young people. So young people is part of the name of your organization. That's good. Milena Ruslanova, head of the Department of Investment Policy and Development of Entrepreneurship of the Ministry of Economic Development of the Russian Federation, Evgenia Shohina, Director for the Fund of Support uh, of Social Projects, Natalia Pachinok, um, Rector of uh, State Social University, and Yulia Zhigulina, Head of the Fund, which is called Our Future. We will also have uh, Sergei Novikov today with us, head of the department um, under the president for social projects. And thus, I think um, we will be able to discuss, our speakers will discuss various uh, points of view for the topic, for the subject we have now. We will also discuss cases uh, from young people implementing social projects. And they, from another, another angle, they can talk uh, about uh, is it really a real so means of social mobility implementation of such projects? Um, so let's start with Alexei, Alexei Gennadievich. So you last year we start you started um, a very ambitious project, uh, Leaders of Russia. Everyone knows about it uh, in this country and monitor the successes of the program and various. Uh, semi-finalists uh, approached us uh, today and asked about the tasks for the next stage, next round, and uh, the new season. The new season has a very interesting project in it, uh, the heart of a leader. Why Why this social agenda for leaders of Russia, management, um, managers competition? And in this, uh, in this um, organization, you are chairing now Russia, the country of opportunities. Where is the social agenda in it? So thank you very much. 
let me tell you a couple of words about what uh, is uh, Russia the country of opportunities. The decision to set up such organization was made by, pres by the president last year. And uh, uh, from summer, we are now a legal entity. And our task is to find and support projects uh, that that uh, actually stimulate social means of mobility, social lifts for youngsters, for young people. There are various projects. They are all very different, 15 of them today. I cannot tell you about all of them today, unfortunately, but I'll, I'll touch upon some of them now. So first of all, the project you already mentioned, the Leaders of Russia project. I can say that when it was uh, set up last year, we had many arguments around about how it should work, how it should operate, whom we are searching for, who, le who the leaders are, how we can select them, how we can assess their leadership qualities. And despite the fact that we've uh, selected the best experts uh, from across Russia in order to discuss all these points or because of this fact, uh, our arguments are going on and on. And the competition will be developing in the future. Indeed, we will have various changes. And one of these changes will happen this year at semifinals. We, we, did, uh, we did decide to introduce a task, uh, a social project. This, is, this project is called the heart of a leader. And all semifinalists, in order to go through semifinals, should uh, implement a social project on their own or being part of another project, or, you know, better creating it on your own with a team of people. Well, why do we think uh, that we should have it? You know, in the leaders, in these arguments about who the, le who the leaders are and whom we need, we realize that those are not only people who can inspire others uh, and inspire not only those uh, who can go forward on their own, but also uh, those with the proper values. Proper values, we mean, by proper values, we mean, you know, caring about others. We do not want to limit anyone in this task. We didn't want to limit uh, the sphere of activities. It can be any project. Uh, you can help people, you can help elderly people, you can help kids, uh, you can, you know, help uh, animals. Uh, it can be any project. Uh, we know a lot of cases like that around. And what I was happy about is that despite the fact that some of the finalists uh, said that we would not do this, probably they really wouldn't and will go would go away, but the majority of them were quite enthusiastic about uh, such projects. And I think that uh, this is a very good, you know, movement of social projects, and we will start it uh, quite soon. Sergei Gennadievich will join us soon, and he will talk about um, the year of volunteer. He will talk about social projects implemented across the country. And I managed to talk to a lot of people, authors of various projects, participants of the projects, and I, and I clearly see that uh, that modern young people are not only motivated by professional career achievements, not only money is the motivator, not only high positions, uh, high profile positions, but you know, uh, when you give something to other people, you get a lot uh, emotionally, and they are all inspired by this, and this is a very good sign, this is a very good trend indeed. And we also have, within the framework of the project Russia, the country of opportunities, we have a project which is called My First Business. Uh, very young people, school kids, implement their business projects uh, within the framework of the, this project. And I was happy to see a lot of uh, projects uh, that uh, can be called social projects. By the way, uh, well, I would like to make uh, a hot discussion now. Uh, we, before we start uh, the started the session, we talked to uh, the moderator and he said, I'm against the term social entrepreneurship. And uh, I also, I, I think that I am not against social entrepreneurship. I'm advocating it. I think it's a good, a very good thing. But I 
think that it should not be limited by anything. We, with our hearts, we always feel where is the social project, where it is not a social project, how to legal, legally articulate it. I do not know exactly. And I haven't seen any people who could answer this question clearly enough. Because if you just train someone or teach some, someone something, is it a social project or not? If you teach uh, a foreign language, is it a social project or not? If you take $100 per hour for this, is it a social project or not? So the border, the line between the two is felt by heart usually. But the people, the guys from the project My First Business, I saw a lot of projects like that. I remember Maxim Kuzin, a boy from Izhevsk, uh, who created a tactile chess for for people with um, with the sight disabilities, uh, with blind people. So he uh, usually played chess with his grandfather, and he got blind with age. And so he started this business. And so that's the project, the product he created. I saw a lot of projects like that, and I hope that despite the whether we can find a proper definition and characteristics of what social entrepreneurship is and what it is not. Anyway, I think the kindness and the good good ideas, um, good motivation uh, for our young people, I think it will grow. And in the competition, the leaders of Russia, we will create something else to support such initiatives. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I hope that uh, we can talk today also about the definition of what social entrepreneurship is, you know, the framework of uh, of it. You know, Milena Tahirovna is here. We have a decree, a law done by the president to, to introduce amendments into the legislation, and there are some some articulated definitions um, from the meeting of the government uh, and also terms that we use here in RANEPA, what social entrepreneurship is, probably it is wider than that of the Western countries. So we can probably say that it's a classic definition. But uh, to, to articulate how we translate the social entrepreneurship uh, initiatives, let's just watch a short video and uh, that we use for our students to explain what social entrepreneurship, what who social entrepreneur is and how he looks like. So let's have uh, the video with the sound, please. And become part of Race Accelerator. Start your, his, start your story today. My name is Kirill Matveev. I'm 23 from my childhood. In the school, my friends uh, told me and my family told me that I'm not a leader, that I am too soft uh, and too sensitive. Uh, they told me that I cannot take an active position in our society and I cannot do business because uh, the world of business is a very aggressive world where you need to take very very strict decisions. Uh, you should not be emotional or sentimental. Just money and uh, cold mind uh, is important for business. But I helped uh, animals around. I helped elderly people. I was volunteer in uh, children's orphans houses. And I thought that I would have a business in the future. And I will be able to help other people. And I was lucky enough. I found about uh, Raise Accelerator in 2015. And they taught me how to properly create an idea and how to make a business plan out of it, effective business plan. And now I win in the race competition. Now I have the support of partners around and now I have a lot of friends. So they're all developing social projects in various cities across Russia. But the most important thing I am thankful to raise very much is that I now have a very strong team with which we strengthened our project and went to the next level. Now we have a lot of clients and our turnover is growing day by day. For us, business is, first of all, an opportunity to create more good things around us, become part of Raise Accelerator, start your story today. So so this is the picture, the feeling of it, the the you know, the whole journey, how we see it. What can happen to young people if they do things like that? So the question is always the same. The things you do in the business or the money that you earn from the business, this is a very important question for people. But social entrepreneurship, I think, um, on a 
platform of large economic forum. You know, the Agency of Strategic Initiatives started this initiative uh, for the forum. A couple of years ago, we had a session devoted to social entrepreneurship and the very important point was articulated um, Andre Belosov articulated at that time uh, the entrepreneur social entrepreneurship it started to develop and this in Sochi we had uh, the volunteer games and a lot of volunteer centers you know this becoming a volunteer is a very good step forward to towards um, social entrepreneurship because if you become a volunteer you do things with your hands and the next step is when you know how to manage things and then you start as the video shows us you start the more effective show social projects with a better platform underpinning it so that's uh, what um, uh, where we were going towards in our initiatives and you wanted to also add something to the discussion you know probably not only going from volunteering to managerial skills but also for those who has um, who have um, the skills, proper skills, it may also become a very proper, very good and effective experience. So we have a special program for preparation for training of uh, the high level top rank managers. And from the program, we now have a lot of governors appointed by the president. It is not a public, probably not very much public program. You've probably heard something about it. Uh, you know, stories in the media say that uh, we do very harsh things to people and just um, let let them uh, fell off the cliff. Uh, you know, it is a very powerful education and training program, actually. But uh, now we are making an experiment with the current group. Probably we didn't um, publish enough information about it, but I'll tell you, we offered uh, the leaders we have on this program, we offered them to participate in volunteer pro projects. They went to orphans houses and hospices, and they felt uh, how, what it is like to become part of it uh, and the impact is really great. I'm not going to tell you the stories they told me and the tears in their eyes, but I understand that I think that such approach towards volunteering movement, it might not also be a step forward in your career, but it might be a very important stage of your life, irrespective of what uh, you are doing and uh, on what professional level or career level you are today. It is always a very, very useful work for your soul and for your heart. Thank you. And then now I would like to give the floor to the first public uh, servant in our on our list. Uh, you know, uh, you are um, uh, the alumni of uh, President's Academy, Alexander Bogaev, um, Young uh, Youth Policy Department. So my question is, in the youth policy, if the are trends like that, what is changing in it? And what allows uh, you to you know, work with uh, this uh, uh, to involve uh, these people from 14 to 30 years of age, to involve them into social projects implementation. Thank you very much. Uh, not only from 14 to 30 years of age, you know, the life is going on. And uh, today at the plenary session, it was said that uh, one of the challenges that we face as a country and as uh, uh, and then globally, you know, of course, uh, it is technological advancements uh, that we face today in our life every day. And in this sense, we can say that the age of um, getting and becoming an adult uh, grown up is, is changing. You know, the picture with a bird, you've probably saw it. Uh, you know, a small little girl is um, trying to to you know uh, look at this uh, at this uh, uh, bird uh, but it is uh, animated it is uh, alive uh, but she tries to just uh, pin it and uh, look at it in all details so you I thought that you might say that uh, uh, in Europe if you're 40 plus you you're also young you know in Germany 45 uh, 45 plus they think that, yes, these are young people. I do not know whether it is good or bad, but uh, yes, there are also photos of 18 years old in the 80s. You know, they looked like uh, really serious grown-ups uh, uh, with mustache and all that. But, you know, yes, we can discuss it for long about the self-definition of people in terms of age. But we, first of all, as the federal agency for the youth uh, affairs uh, matters we exist to create um, we work to create uh, more opportunities for self-development for young people in this country and we had a very interesting offline discussion 
just recently, and colleagues were, would probably add to that. What is social entrepreneurship, social means of mobility? What is it? I do not know, frankly speaking. There are various, op various opinions on that, but anyway, it allows people to to, to develop themselves. And this is one of the most important uh, uh, ideas and motivation for people. If you look at the at the alumni of our programs uh, and also colleagues from the higher, higher School of Economics and colleagues from other commercial structures, you know, the um, motivation for self-development is one of the most important things today for young people. You know, we know a story of a very well-known bank. I do not give you the name now, but uh, they have been, for many years, they have uh, been selecting the best alumni of um, graduates of economic uh, universities, uh, offering them job uh, positions. But now they do not have a lot of people willing to, to join them because the market has changed. IT companies offer better conditions of work, better environment, better quality of life, better, better means of self-development. And now they realize that you need to compete for young people and change yourself. And in this sense, of course, self-development uh, is is something we should be very much interested in as a state for, for our young people. And all other things should be aligned uh, around it. And I just um, told Alexei that the self-development of uh, young people, not only young people, but other people, is the main, main, uh, you know, idea of uh, the project Russia, the country of opportunities. You know, self-development of uh, everyone means the growth for the country, means changes in quality of life for the whole country, and we, we have a line of projects. Uh, campaign of forums uh, of by Ross Malajosh and the grant uh, campaigns. Uh, and a lot of things uh, where we support uh, young entrepreneurs, including social entrepreneurs. We have uh, special programs with the Ministry of Economic Development. I think we will also touch upon it today during the panel. But in this sense, I I would like to talk about about things uh, I started with, not to you know take um, too long, too much time. We need as uh, f as a country, as uh, public servants, we need. We need to change as quickly as the world around us is changing today. And the changes that uh, are going around us, around our society, and uh, puts uh, challenges towards it and social changes, they create new trends, new areas in youth policy, both in the age uh, groups uh, and in various frameworks. Uh, last uh, End of last year, I, I had a business trip where I met a very young person seemingly young person. He was uh, 12 years of age, uh, but he has a very serious, serious business and he actually earns more money than his parents. So probably, well, is he a grown up person? Yes, sure, he is. And, you know, we also should meet their requirements uh, and know what they want. Uh, and again, uh, Again, we should create the opportunities for everyone, for every young person, for them to self, uh, to develop themselves everywhere, in social practices, in business, in any other area, in art, in culture, in politics, in science. And for this, we do a lot, and volunteers, movement, and Alexei already mentioned this, is a very important uh, point of growth, uh, of potential growth. And Sergei Gennadievich will join us shortly, and uh, he will talk about the year of volunteer according to the decree of the president. Uh, it was uh, it was carried out last year, and the social initiatives uh, that it comprised. From our side, we, as an operator of the social project for social activities, uh, which goes within the framework of the national educational project. Uh, we've started uh, all the activities and we we put a lot of meaning into the social project to create uh, as much opportunities, as many opportunities as possible to develop volunteers, uh, volunteers initiatives and uh, not to pushing anything from the top. And this is about meeting the challenges uh, we face today. So I think that's it from me now, probably a bit vague um, comment, but um, this is a very interesting, interesting uh, point indeed. You started uh, started saying it at the beginning of the session. If we all knew the right answer to this question, probably we wouldn't have so much interest we have today for this panel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexander. 
So at the second part of our discussion, we will also talk about uh, the young people who are doing the social projects, and we will also hear their feedback. What? As to uh, how their vision um, to, uh, and how effective this system is and how it helps them to implement um, the, uh, themselves in. Um, and I would like to... Um, to discuss, we uh, already did it before um, the session, and uh, she criticized us, uh, and it was said that uh, one of the three hashtags is um, um, not needed. And I know that um, there was an instruction of the president to uh, understand uh, what kind of definition and to provide definitions, uh, what kind um, it is, and your ministry is um, involved in that. Even uh, in the ministry, you can say that there are two de uh, departments uh, engaged in different social projects. You um, uh, cover uh, the development of um, um, uh, entrepreneurship and Mr. Shadrin and other things. There's always confusion, which leads to the fact that you um, had um, to first identify what it should be and uh, what about our um, uh, the changes. So, judging by the, the time um, the uh, draft law um, had been developed, um, well, uh, it was uh, end of 19, uh, 2017 when uh, the instruction uh, had been issued. But the problem is that the experts and, uh, and the community cannot um, identify and um, uh, get aligned on uh, what it is. So for what is extremely important to identify um, the perimeter uh, and um, the draft law um, has been uh, running uh, around the, uh, the circle. Well, well, why it is done um, to identify the circle of entrepreneurs um, who are engaged in special type of activities. There's something on the verge of uh, charity and personal civil position uh, to cover um, and solve uh, some social tasks, but also a business model which um, uh, with, uh, not with a negative uh, profitability, while well, uh, uh, people can devote their life to, to that and and uh, exist on that quite uh, handsomely. But um, uh, how to identify uh, who uh, the social entrepreneur is? Uh, well, the discussions were very heated. Uh, in, in uh, among the departments, and everybody has an understanding of uh, we currently, if we um, uh, sort of uh, identify it, but we should better do it in a dotted line to um, keep uh, this window to include some new types of activities uh, into it, because social innovations, of course, will uh, be developing, and to say that, for instance, uh, um, ecological or environmental projects, whether it's social entrepreneurs, or for instance, a drinking water a project. Is it social entrepreneurship? Uh, because we cannot uh, limit ourselves with um, helping people, only disabled people, because um, uh, there's a wider um, uh, list of uh, issues and matters. Um, so the state and principle already today, yes, it, it does um, uh, render aid to a wide range of uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, the, there's certain uh, cl uh, cluster of uh, services and uh, supports. Um, uh, we somehow um, can uh, can do it, and we um, uh, and we can cope with it. And the regions are identifying their um, uh, goals. Well, uh, it depends, you know, and uh, it confirms the fact that the subject, this subject matter, is very uh, um, has a very uh, a lot of neighboring meanings. And uh, um, by the end of the day, we together with a very wide uh, range of experts, and we did uh, have hearings in a public chamber to identify the criteria. Um, we decided not to just identify the spheres, but um, the criteria. And we also got aligned um, um, the, uh, that the government uh, will be very flexible in identifying those spheres. For instance, if uh, there's a social innovation out there for us to be able uh, to uh, include it uh, fast, because we will not be able to do it otherwise because uh, we have studied uh, the international experience, which is very versatile, and it confirms uh, the um, diffic uh, difficulty of uh, this question. Social entrepreneur, as we understood it, is someone who provides employment to certain categories of uh, people, not to say who they are. 
are the people who are treated um, as unprotected, uh, those who have difficulties in life. Um, so social entrepreneurs are those who provide uh, access uh, to services and goods uh, to, uh, to the people of uh, to the market um, of uh, those categories of people. Well, it's their Voska project everybody knows about, and um, the um, dis- dis- disabled people, they um producing some goods, but they don't have comp- competences um, to, um, to market it. And uh, there are people who can um, play the role of mediators. And also, uh, there's uh, a category or a criterion um, of um, inclusion. Uh, the goods uh, which are produced for the categories of people who are treated as vulnerable. Well, a very wide range uh, of uh, a list of uh, um, uh, goods, for instance, electronic um, and software for um, um, uh, for the aids of uh, for the, to the bl- of the blind. Um, and in Kazan, there's this, a local factory where guys, um, um, there are three um, uh, boys, uh, seven years uh, old, they developed, had developed um, um, uh, a product. It's a Rubik um, cube uh, for the partially blind. Um, so uh, they, uh, with tactile um, uh, figures, well, it's not um, a very expensive uh, product. Of course, their parents helped them. They are seven years old, but with, um, they had a very good business model. And uh, as far as I understand, they are actively marketing their products, uh, their goods. Uh, um, something um, um like that well the partially blind uh, they do need entertainment because it improves uh, their quality of life just as an example or some medical goods or some specific uh, individually or tailor made um, medical goods um, well and totally social entrepreneur uh, should um, um solve some specific tasks of the society and it so happens that the state uh, um cannot uh, satisfy uh, it all it cannot solve them all the four criteria um, well very generalized uh, which identify what um, uh, they are the categories of people the spheres of their activities the Uh, All will be um, fine-tuned by the government. That's the approach we decided to have. What are the measures of support? Well, some of them already exist today. It's the grants and uh, Center of Innovative uh, Spheres. Um, uh, Well, there are 31 uh, of them. We are planning to do it in the regions, uh, in all the regions. Um, Educational support, information, legal consultations. um, Uh, according to the new concept, um, uh, or they all will uh, be uh, on the business platforms uh, and um, a similar concept like um, um, multifunctional centers, uh, and they will be placed there, and it will be quite convenient uh, to have only one window. Um, it's um, it's if you need some consultations to how to start up a business or if you need an educational service, a social entrepreneur can um, come down there not only with his own problem of development of his very complicated sphere, but in generally to uh, claim for uh, microfinancing or maybe get some uh, legal support or maybe to get consultations from a businessman if uh, there are problems. Besides, popularizing, uh, well, what we face there. Um, entrepreneurs um, uh, just they don't uh, uh, are not aware of what kind of um, support measures they can get. Well, uh, in the best of cases, 30% of them are aware of all those things, and people cannot use uh, the opportunities the state can provide. And um, but social uh, entrepreneurs uh, they are unaware whether they can claim those uh, support measures because there's another mm, a problem because uh, they themselves do not identify them uh, themselves they're often as social uh, entrepreneurs. For instance, if uh, they are mm, um, selling or producing goods uh, for special categories of people, they're just unaware that they can claim uh, for uh, additional um, uh, education or an award or um, be enrolled uh, into some educational program. Well, the problem is quite comprehensive, and the draft law is a little bit delayed and dragged in time. We um, wanted it uh, to be adopted early, but uh, 
better late than never, and the expert community and the entrepreneurs. Well, it is not yet well uh, well outlined, but we hope that finally the perimeter and the people will um, um, get uh, united to have some community of their own, and the people will start creating uh, their associations and portals, and the information will be popularized and uh, disseminate, uh, disseminated, and we will have an upheaval of such pro um, projects. And of course, we are ready to for those uh, trends uh, with our support measures. Thank you very much for very fresh news uh, you provided um, um, uh, and how we are trying to identify what a social entrepreneur uh, is and uh, who he is. And as I said at the beginning, we don't have uh, representatives of the Agency uh, of Strategic Initiatives because they've been involved in it since uh, 2011. But they have uh, their supervisory board, a very uh, important event for that. Um, so Evgeny Shokhin is going to talk for them all. Since uh, you are going to do it um, in uh, um, uh, in two characters, so what if you know what the agency is uh, going to do in this sphere in 2016 um, uh, as a result of the meeting of uh, the social entrepreneurs with the president? They now uh, have a fund which uh, uh, has been operating uh, for a year already. Using this opportunity, I would like to say th first of all to uh, the fund Our Future because they were the first who had raised the issue. And and uh, they did a lot uh, during those 11 years. And we, um, uh, uh, using their experience to study and, of course, um, uh, the race um, the competition, which is uh, our um, flagman, which uh, can help um, uh, the uh, future entrepreneurs to find themselves and uh, opportunities um, um, to do it. Um, and uh, we, as uh, the fund, uh, we in the fund, which was registered um, uh, 18 months ago, but we've been operating since January 2018. And um, recapping uh, our experience, I can say that uh, we also um, have uh, adopted three acceleration programs, uh, but we are uh, distinguished in the fact that we are working only with the existing entrepreneurs uh, with at least first sales already happened, and we have rendered aid to more than 300 entrepreneurs. And what's important for us um, asking, answering this question as to who they are, those social entrepreneurs, first of all, th those are the people who are solving very important social problems, and first of all, related to personal uh, stories. Uh, and problems of people, and uh, there are a lot of pro projects um, uh, helping uh, the disabled children, and uh, it is important that, um, according to the Charter, we are rendering acceleration and um, um, preferential uh, funding, and the people who come to um, uh, to us uh, at the end of the accelerator, they just reject the money they wanted uh, in the beginning, because um, um, using the effective acceleration mechanisms, we thus help the people to understand and how they can learn to earn money themselves. Because uh, certainly, uh, to a large extent, the, some charity initiatives uh, and very often uh, the founders um, um, are hesitating to uh, request money from um, the parents of disabled children. And we are teaching them as to what kind of mechanisms they can use to earn money fast. And uh, we're very happy to see our graduates here. We have a separate nomination, the project of the project project which, uh, project which um, um, uh, came from the charity, I mean, uh, this uh, uh, spring um, uh, shawl, well, in the three months of acceleration, they earned how, they learned how to earn money, and they did. Uh, so again, uh, getting back to uh, who, whom we are enrolling to the fund, well, to um, well, the, the law we help uh, to see uh, shortly will help us, I, I'm sure. But we still have uh, c quite a big pipeline of projects, not only for social entrepreneurs, uh, um, but um, for instance, if for instance uh, it's uh, uh, some courses or rehabilitation centers, well, they are projects in social sphere. And uh, for instance, if it is private cl clinics in uh, small cities or towns, uh, we also um, treat them as social entrepreneurship. Or, for instance, a business in the territory with uh, very few people, um, and uh, it means support of uh, smaller regions and centers. 
Uh, needless to say, we have a supervisory board um, and um, we have our own. Uh, well, the A um, ASI um, has uh, their own today, but uh, which uh, can come to uh, the conclusion as to whom they um, support uh, or financially. So we uh, financed um, uh, 1.5 billion rubles each last year. So I hope that in 2019 we're going to be more effective uh, and will streamline the process. Getting back to the youth, I can uh, say quite candid that we don't have a lot of uh, young people. Well, maybe because um, well, the guys uh, want to earn a lot right away. Well, for instance, uh, four children, uh, three of them teenagers, and they asked uh, mom, um, what shall we uh, do to earn one million dollars up front? Well, I think that's, that's very indicative. Uh, this um, example of uh, the boy uh, in the video who brought in uh, the cats and helped uh, uh, the aged people. Well, social entrepreneurship, first of all, is solving um, some problems um, from their hearts and earning money is number two uh, as a priority. So, and uh, our fund uh, help, uh, pe helps people to learn how to do it. So, uh, that's very important um, uh, to um, support such people who uh, take care of cats, uh, for them to uh, really understand and learn how they, ca uh, how they can uh, systematize their experience uh, and use their professional experience. And um, again, um, uh, using the experience uh, of uh, my children who want to uh, start up their business at 11, well, actually, we don't have a law which uh, will allow them to do it because it's, uh, they can do it only um, as of uh, 14 years of age and now only with, this, uh, with the cons uh, consent of the, the parents and uh, they will not be able to do anything. So or maybe we should uh, set up um, infrastructure where the children who want want and can um, um, do something uh, to, to, to do it. Uh, well, not maybe to deliver a pizza because you don't know whether he will come back home. Or maybe uh, to create an ecosystem with employers um, or maybe um, a Russian um, industrialist union uh, to be involved. Uh, but of course, uh, the state, um, uh, the public officials should be involved. Maybe we should uh, reflect on that. Thank you very much. A very interesting track, and Alexander said that uh, it's becoming younger and younger. I mean, uh, young, active young people. And you also said, well, uh, interestingly, what I expected uh, that um, do, do you have 50 by 50 50 split the uh, younger and mature people? Well, 15 uh, percent only, um, because uh, of course maybe it's because uh, we um, take uh, we accept only ready-made products. And next uh, this year we are opening some new project uh, new projects and products for those um, young people, and it's going to be pre-acceleration uh, pr program, uh, 12 video lessons uh, to get them involved in the business tasks for the people to get an idea of whether they are ready to do to do it. Those who uh, are going to be successful will be able to enroll in uh, the uh, into the acceleration uh, in absentia and uh, the idea though uh, was uh, for the people to get registered to understand what kind of support measures uh, using maybe regional development centers um, um, to use so and uh, the company where the first sales will be uh, the result and uh, the people who feel this desire and um, um, our possibility to uh, to do it so we invite them and we have the website where you can look up uh, what all the details um, uh, there. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that um, um, uh, we have a, a lot of new um, projects um, among our students. Okay, um, let's uh, maybe sign off. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, well, you mentioned a very interesting project and case. I didn't even think about that. I thought that that, that was a path from volunteers to social uh, entrepreneurs, but uh, the kind heart, but with charity projects that they can tra uh, transform into uh, earning um, uh, projects um, to stop uh, being uh, getting money from charity, uh, but to monetize themselves. Very interesting case um, with lots of prospects. Uh, now we are joined by Mr. Novikov, um, head of um, 
Department uh, of um, Public Projects of the Administration of the President. We uh, did not yet mention the uh, results of the Volunteers' Year and um, the fund of um, uh, presidential grants. Um, and I, uh, at the beginning, I said that, well, OK, let's um, um, uh, let's discuss it here. Well, since uh, well, it's a very wide interpretation of social entrepreneurship. Well, we can fantasize here and try to use some others. We uh, treat it quite in a wide sense. Well, uh, whether it's a uh, um, profit or non-profit, it doesn't matter. But if you can uh, share about the state policy in uh, stimulating social projects, especially uh, among youth and about the year of volunteers and about the fund of uh, presidential grants. It would be great. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, um, good evening. Uh, sorry for um, being a little bit late for the discussion and, uh, and about the questions and about the um, volunteers' year, the results of the year, and those who um, saw, uh, who managed to, to see on the 28th of December the uh, meeting of the council. Well, uh, it was discussed uh, quite widely, but in a nutshell, I can say that if, for instance, um, uh, for uh, January 1st, um, 2018, um, volunteers um, um, according to public opinion, there were only 7% uh, of um, uh, the population. And it is doubled, uh, this number, during the year. It is 15% now, um, the grown-up population who th uh, think themselves um, volunteers. Well, there's a certain, of course, uh, difficulty of statistical accounting because Rostat cannot uh, be very precise because they are not uh, monitoring as to how many people are really involved in uh, volunteers activities um, uh, to be really very precise uh, with the numbers and um, to confirm it with uh, science. Uh, but um, uh, well, um, uh, still we can see that um, uh, if a grown up people um, counts for 109 million people, then 16.5 uh, million of, of them, which is 15 percent, those are the people who think that they are involved in uh, volunteers' activities. Uh, to do um, good things, um, um, and uh, this um, double if um, number, double number is a very good eff uh, eff effect, and um, that's the impetus um, that was given by uh, the president and. Um, uh, the year of volunteers didn't stop on the 31st of December. It will only start further on. Um, and uh, during the time, uh, well, the, that's uh, the number one result. Well, actually, the whole system of volunteership uh, was um, uh, set up through the whole life. And uh, um, during the panel discussion, one of the question, questions was, um, which was planned to, do, to be discussed, as to who the volunteer is, uh, what kind of age uh, you can become a volunteer. Uh, when uh, should they start this activity? Well, the answer was that we should uh, have um, of, uh, infrastructure uh, in place for volunteers to be able to do it uh, for their whole life. So we have uh, school children volunteers um, centers or uh, universities. Mm, or, well, uh, well, we might discuss it at, uh, at large, but we have corporate uh, volunteers. Um, uh, those volunteers programs um, um, done by major corporations when it's a young or mature people involved in those uh, programs. And all those organizations which um, have been created during the recent um, uh, years, it's uh, search um, movements and medical volunteers uh, and event volunteers. Um, um, or victory volunteers. Well, actually, that's not only the young people involved there, but um, uh, grown-up people also are very much involved, especially in the searching uh, areas. Um, usually, they are quite grown-up. And um, uh, the uh, and uh, the center of uh, silver um, volunteerships um, uh, and. Um, uh, 30 such um, resource centers in the regions uh, have been set up of uh, silver uh, volunteerships. And that's not the limit, and we are aiming at every uh, territory to have um, the, this kind of centers. And uh, the third very important result that um, um, can um, 
enjoy this effect is um, improving the normative base uh, and uh, the changes and amendments to the law have been um, uh, adopted um, seemingly a very cosmetic measure uh, but still um, many uh, people in the regions well they were confusing uh, this definition of volunteer and um, uh, well, and I can see the simultaneous interpretation. I don't know how they are going to interpret it. Those two notions, because in English it's the same word, but in the Russian language there are two um, language norms uh, for uh, this um, word, and it turned out that the people perceive it differently. Um, so uh, that's why um, uh, uh, no one should feel offended or upset about the interpretation. So this is the tip of the iceberg, but the regulation in general was was quite developed in many aspects in part of uh, accessibility, availability of activities uh, for volunteers of uh, various activities in medical and educational institutions. So some steps uh, towards it have already been done and uh, the uh, power sectors, power uh, organizations, uh, Siloviki, they also made a lot and sometimes we do not uh, understand the scale of the operations, but uh, more than tens of thousands of lives are saved uh, with the help of people who do the search uh, for those who go to forests and uh, got lost. And during the spring session, one of the most um, meaningful law, draft law now is the opportunity to share geolocation data for from mobile phones for those who got lost. Especially important it is in the climatic uh, harsh seasons and when the search uh, starts the first couple of hours is very important and it is great to have such data in the first couple of hours. Uh, you know, the law on personal data prohibits sharing such uh, data but uh, uh, you know, it is important to now say yes to sharing such geolocation data from mobile phones of people who got lost. But uh, there are a lot of such uh, regulations, um, challenges uh, around. And uh, yes, sometimes we think that it was uh, too long ago, but uh, last year uh, tax offices in some regions tried to take uh, the profit tax uh, from income tax, uh, income tax from uh, the uh, payments uh, to volunteers uh, to pay for their trip to, for, for instance, to Vladivostok from Moscow to do their volunteering activities. So they have to pay 13% from the sum from the sum of the money for the ticket. But uh, there was an initiative under the president uh, to, to stop such uh, practices. Uh, so volunteers, uh, things around them, I do not want to just stop here because uh, the initiative from the top level, uh, you know, this initiative from the top, it has already started, but it's just the beginning of the journey. And uh, there is a, there are international foreign practices. Uh, uh, we need to, to make more steps forward and improve our practices. And now it is a trendy thing in the society to do volunteering. People, people spend their time and, uh, you know, some people uh, have a special line in the family budget uh, to spend uh, for volunteering. So it is a very important uh, part of uh, culture. And according to the United Nations assessments uh, published recently, volunteering activities, if we assess it in economic terms, it allows uh, you to add a couple of percents uh, into the GDP. So it doesn't mean that volunteers uh, just um, substitute the state, but sometimes they are working in an areas in areas where a state uh, did not know what to do on the systemic level. As for the fund of the president's grants, yes, we are doing this work very transparently, and over these two years, more than six thousand organizations, uh, organizations and projects uh, received uh, six. 6,700 projects received support for the total, and the total sum of the support is 15 billion rubles. So it's quite large money. And the most important thing is that um, 
I do not want to take too much time. We are now refocusing the geography of uh, the coverage of the grants, not just uh, by our decision, but uh, through creating a system of electronic uh, accumulation of the bids and electronic profiles among NGOs uh, from remote regions. Uh, they can, without going to Moscow and spending money on this, they can now, if they're successful in their projects, uh, they can apply remotely in electronic format. And now more than 80% of beneficiaries of uh, grants are representatives of various regions of the country. Previously, we had a situation where more than half of grants uh, went to Moscow or the central federal region. So this system now is covering all regions of Russia. And uh, we think that it is quite clear for everyone how to apply. And, you know, the requirements are minimal for for you know formalizing the documents and the main thing is the content here if the project is really interesting and meaningful and it has its target audience and the impact is quite clear who the beneficiaries are and uh, there is co-financing that's also quite important you know it, these projects uh, are not only important for the president, but uh, for people who are ready to finance these activities also that's quite important. And we have 8 billion rubles uh, this year, last year, 2018, more out of 8 billion uh, added to this 8 billion. We had another 5 billion from other sources. So in real life, uh, the in NGOs through this grant system last year received for their projects more than 13 billion rubles just over one year. But at the same time, the fund uh, stays in the budget uh, framework that uh, was adopted uh, initially. So these are the most important facts and figures I can articulate now. But I, I am ready to answer your questions, if any, but I don't, just do not want to take too much time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. A couple of questions to you just for short answers. First of all, we had a um, year of volunteer last year. Uh, now we're talking about social entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship of young people. And you're talking now about president's grants and the large scale nature of uh, the support. So in a year or two, uh, the year of volunteer, will it mean more NGOs or social entrepreneurs or or these things are not uh, interrelated? I think, yes, uh, after the state council meeting, we have a decision president uh, articulated in his opening remarks. I think this, this will become an instruction and those who work in this area, they are aware of that. Uh, to get into the register of uh, useful services uh, for NGOs, it is quite uh, quite challenging to get into the register. So now it is uh, articulated that if you go through the application process uh, for President's grants and you have an approval for financing and you did a successful project, you can automatically say that that your organization is certified uh, for uh, publicly useful services uh, pro provision. So for many thousands uh, of organizations, uh, this uh, filter will be lifted. At the same time, for the 18 months uh, uh, this project is in place, uh, now just 197 organizations above as of December last year, were able to get into the registers, into the register. So the scope of benefits uh, and the efforts you can spend, it's just the right to participate in, uh, in the competition uh, to provide uh, publicly beneficial services uh, with the budget means, you know, NGOs uh, can can get uh, into the register, but it was a challenging process. But anyway, we will have uh, we'll go into the next level, and we will enhance the register from 197 to 6,000 of um, organizations registered uh, in in the list. Uh, so it's very important. And about the participants, you know, we say that uh, social entrepreneurship is a new means of social mobility. I have uh, some cases. Uh, when authors of uh, projects 
grow very much in terms of um, social mobility. For instance, head of uh, uh, the uh, council of um, uh, many, many children, large families, um, uh, large families organization, uh, Irina Medvedeva, she did a lot of uh, useful projects and now she is in the governor's office. Uh, quite good um, career success. And another case, um, Valentin Robotenko from Stavropol region after receiving the president's, uh, president's grant. Uh, so he developed uh, a project for the street art and sports, uh, became uh, counsel to the governor, to the, to the governor of uh, the Stavropolsky region. So yes, there are cases like that, quite successful career development. Uh, and sometimes uh, governors do not uh, see the NGOs they have in their regions, but uh, when they, the NGO, uh, an, an NGO receives a grant uh, from the president, uh, they are successful in that and governors understand that these are useful, important projects and take people from the teams of projects. So this is a social lift indeed, but not as uh, large scale as leaders of Russia. But anyway, yes, uh, very interesting, very interesting, uh, well, cases uh, when you do an exit in investment business, uh, when you sell your company successfully. Interestingly enough, when we can see cases uh, when uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, social entrepreneurs also make similar exits, uh, selling it to the state. Yes, this is an exit. You create your project uh, and it is successful. Now you're a vice governor. That's great. Well, that's important that the project uh, is still alive and operating effectively. Another, another question. You mentioned very young people in your speech, uh, school children, preschool children, do they have uh, means of uh, support? Probably we should create something for school children because they are enthusiastic and uh, you are ready to do socially uh, oriented projects. But the people, some of them are underage and uh, usually the support means are aiming at legal entities and Evgeny's fund and President's grant, Grants Fund, uh, you should exist for more than six months and so and so on, but we, and, and that's why these are the challenges. And you also, you also visited um, the uh, the uh, camp, special camp for IC Accelerator. Do you think uh, that uh, school children can do really successful projects? I I think uh, they are ready, absolutely. I have uh, colleagues, uh, they have a lot of facts about that. Alexey Gennadievich, since he is head of uh, the organization called Russia, the country of opportunities, so at their platform they have uh, a project which is called My First Business. And a lot of school children participate in the project. And with development of a digital environment, I think uh, school children just earn money today without asking anything, anyone. So yes, there is some regulation, but uh, yes, we can discuss uh, whether it is legal enough and clear and transparent enough. But with electronic wallets of various formats, various um, means of payments, uh, all these things are available today, and they all use them. I do not think that is bad. Yes, that's this is good indeed. But it's great to have um, have it even more transparent than what we see today. Well, it, it is an important question. Now my question to Yulia Zhigulina. Your organization is uh, the most experienced one in part of social entrepreneurship, uh, and it uh, you are pioneers of uh, volunteering in Russia. You are a private fund. So what is your, your experience? You have um, impulse of good things. Um, project for eight years now. You have a lot of uh, young people, young entrepreneurs, uh, but probably not enough. What, what what should we do in order to develop in this area? What's your, your opinion? Thank you very much for giving me the floor. I will be happy to tell you about the experience of our fund and the material, the cases we've accumulated over the 11 years of our operations. I should boast uh, saying that uh, thanks to the fact that we exist for more than 18 years, 11 years now, we're all talking about uh, social uh, social entrepreneurship. I think this is our merit because we are, we have, uh, we were catalysts of all these projects. We started such projects in 2007. Our first project was to find social entrepreneurs. You, we as you are doing it today, we thought of who they are, what they are doing and why they're different from, uh, from traditional 
conventional entrepreneurs. And now we we have articulated the criteria uh, criteria that are used to, to uh, find the definition of social entrepreneurship within the framework of the law draft law, which is introducing amendments into the law 219. So it's great that these criteria are relevant. And over our eight, 11 years experience, we found a lot of social entrepreneurs, and we have a register of them. And we can say officially that the sector of social entrepreneurship um, does exist. Uh, and if we think about the position of uh, youth, young people in this sector, since uh, the fact is that one of the criteria and the requirement uh, for calling a project a social project um, is innovativeness, and young people are the most uh, innovative, uh, the most pioneering uh, and driving force of our society. They, they are thinking in a non-conventional way, and they can see very interesting approaches to, to tackle the challenges uh, we face now in our society. So very in interesting innovative technologies are applied today, scaling up in uh, scaling them up in digital era allows our youngsters uh, to provide unique solutions indeed. And I can prove that with the, the fact that uh, our fund has financed more than 300 projects of social entrepreneurs for more than half a billion rubles. Of course, uh, it is hard to Oh, we are not competing against the President's Grants Fund because we are a private fund, and we actually did a lot. We uh, we popularized this uh, theme, and we implemented our own project. We tried procurement support for social entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. Our project is not just buying about buying things. We actually worked with. Um, Universities, more than 20 universities now are our partners, and in many in many universities we had competitions for the best ideas for social entrepreneurship uh, among students. And the recent competition I am proud of, very proud of, is uh, a competition for scientific students' uh, articles. We had we carried out together with the All Russia Accelerated uh, Accelerator of Social Initiatives race. 15 works uh, became winners, and they will go into to a joint book that will be published the end of February. Things uh, that um, they, the students are talking about uh, and uh, scientific articles they wrote uh, actually allow us to find new solutions, new approaches, innovative ones. And again, just imagine that um, student is uh, proving that low costers are social projects. This is uh, so surprising, so innovative. So this guy saw that uh, this means low costers, uh, means better quality of life for people who cannot allow uh, a ticket flight, uh, an airplane ticket to the Far East. So, you know, very good, uh, very good articulation of the idea. Another article is uh, is great is a great one i don't give you the name of the student because probably he's here in this room and in his article he says that uh, the youth is the main resource that can support and develop the theme of social entrepreneurship uh, with uh, inno utilization of innovativeness and very interesting approaches and very unconventional solutions so talking about our projects, uh, our fund is supporting. Unfortunately, we have just 10% of um, young people's projects. Uh, but if we uh, if we talk about uh, young people up uh, to 30 years of age, usually those projects are coming from the uh, healthy healthy sector and also services for children and their parents uh, in remote uh, regions of Russia, and uh, also a lot of projects related to to creating and providing infrastructure, sports infrastructure for children, swimming pools, for instance, so things like that. If we discuss social entrepreneurship and uh, think of it with relations uh, to volunteering, we see one single element. Or this, uh, these are the things that people do on their own, and uh, they do not want to earn on this. They just feel that they want to tackle an acute problem of a society. That's why we think that the motivation for volunteers and for social entrepreneurs are categories like things like um, empathy and love. So these are the main uh, 
motivations uh, all these pro projects start with. And they are all very successful because uh, there is no task to earn money or something else. They actually get social impact and then monetize it. And the opportunity to scale up the results and the impact and show new approaches uh, showing and saying the fact that business is business if it has a social element to it. And that's very important. So I think uh, these are the general ideas and uh, points uh, that uh, emotionally should um, inspire young people. If we talk about uh, the social, social lead, social career ladder, uh, well, it's uh, hard to say that uh, social entrepreneurship uh, means the same as means of social mobility. Uh, but uh, I think that it is an opportunity to try yourself and try and tackle things uh, through love and em empathy. Uh, if uh, volunteering is allowing you to do so, then this uh, sequence of steps from volunteering to social entrepreneurship, I think this is quite logical journey and probably the lift is um, is quite relevant in such a sense. And I should say that uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting projects you've heard about probably. They all started as as volunteering projects, uh, and probably you've heard about the story of um, Soulful Bazaar project. Uh, you know, many, many social entrepreneurs who are well known to know today started their activities with this project uh, as volunteers. Uh, Mr. Garkaev, uh, he started the project and he is uh, still working with it. Uh, so, Dasha Alexeva, with her great uh, charity shop project, was part of um, the Soulful Bazaar. And another project, quite uh, interesting one, al tourism. So when people go to remote places, uh, remote villages, and with their own hands, they change the quality of life of people who live there. They restore churches or cathedrals or various types of production. So these are the main cases, the main interrelations. I think this is a very important theme and social entrepreneurship theme will be even more, will become even more popular because the law is um, going to be adopted and there will be more clarity in understanding what it is all about and people will not get confused uh, about uh, social social businesses and uh, social entrepreneurship. There are various um, organization forums and various types of support, but volunteering also is a very important resource that allows people that allows people to to you know, try themselves and uh, try and answer the question whether they are ready, even when school, when they are school children, whether they are ready to go to such things as volunteering. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. Just a short, uh, short comment talking about uh, social entrepreneurship, and I think we will get uh, back to this case again. Uh, we do not talk about the target audiences uh, social social projects uh, are aiming at. They also have the social lift, but we will touch upon it a bit later. I think Natalia Pachinok, the floor is yours. Probably your your university is the only one with the word social in the title. Yes, this is the only one. So. Obviously, you know everything about how to train people for NGOs, for social organizations. What you should do to your students in order to have successful, successful career, entre social entrepreneurs. We know what to do, and we do that. But I should um, agree about. Uh, agree with the words uh, regarding social lift for uh, young people through volunteering. Yes, I agree entirely. First step is volunteering. Step number two is your own social project. So we've uh, been discussing it, and uh, Milena offered the case here in the public um, chamber during the hearings of the law, the definition of social entrepreneurship. You know, we, we had huge arguments. Uh, we thought of enhancing this definition as much as possible and include socially oriented NGOs into the, into the scope of the definition to show the scale and impact of the activities uh, that are done by social entrepreneurs and socially oriented uh, NGOs. And Milena, if you allow me, I would I'd like to talk about the following. We have uh, some data on the fourth annual competition, the best social project of the year, which together with the Ministry of Economic Development and with the support, active support of um, everyone who is here on the panel now, 
uh, the federal agency of uh, the youth and agency of strategic initi initiatives and the fund our future and many many other people pulled their efforts uh, to have uh, the competition the best social project uh, for it to exist and operate effectively so great results this year 85 regions every region applied 1,055 successful projects participated uh, that uh, were uh, sifted through on the regional stage, 301 project on the federal round of the competition. And we were talking about uh, the age. Uh, is there any social entrepreneurship among youngsters? Yes, uh, it does exist. And the data I have on the number of participants out of this 1,055 project, 380 projects. Uh, almost the same number as uh, the number of uh, those among from grown-ups are projects from young people from 26 to 35 and 63 projects from those uh, more than 17 years of age so those projects supported by regions and applied uh, and offered for the competition for innovations in the social sphere and I should say that the statistics uh, very surprising statistics uh, is that the format of ownership for social entrepreneurs, for those who who work in socially oriented activities, is not the priority. And the statistics of this year shows that about about 30 percent from of the participants are NGOs. Individual entrepreneurs, uh, the majority is individual entrepreneurs, more than a half. But uh, if great contribution for more active social entrepreneurship, uh, social activities, of course, was brought by the year of a volunteer, the year of special attention towards development of socially oriented NGOs uh, to measures and infrastructure of support, together, which together with the Agency of Strategic Initiatives uh, was worked on by the regions. They created a platform. And now if we are talking about social lifts, uh, for young people, I I want to mention one thing. Today, in our country, there's a program which is developing uh, and will be supported by the Ministry of Economic Development and uh, the Ministry of Science and Education as universities, of, uh, as centers of um, uh, social development of a region. And I think that uh, the great examples um, of acceleration uh, um, platforms in Ronepa and Social University in the Plekhanov uh, University of Higher School of Economics and in a great number of universities. We will have to transfer this kind of platforms and knowledge uh, centers uh, of um, to the uh, universities in regions for them to mandatorily um, um, cover the um, uh, the social um, uh, all the universities will, uh, and colleges with such um, programs for them to have support and I'm sure um, as Alexei said uh, the uh, competition of the best social project uh, uh, because both um, uh, mature and young people are involved uh, and the grown-up people are involved in that can uh, become one of the next um, projects of the platform Russia is uh, a country of opportunities uh, where all the efforts uh, are combined uh, the funds uh, the state the regions and I think that that's exactly the platform already successfully operating um, is something we should use further on and the social university maybe as a as uh, uh, an idea or a proposal, every um, first year student mandatorily um, um, accepts um, and uh, is trained um, how to communicate and be a volunteer, some skills of um, volunteers. And the next step um, uh, to be followed at uh, the second and third year to create uh, their own ideas inside the university. Maybe we should not experiment uh, creating uh, their own or setting up their own business, but in the framework of an incubator or uh, to support uh, the young people uh, in their first steps. Uh, and we do have such projects in this university here and in uh, a wide range of other universities um, uh, the colleagues were talking about. But I think that this year, 2019, 
uh, must become not only the year when I hope very much of uh, uh, the very fast uh, hearing uh, and adoption of um, by the State Duma of the law um, uh, and uh, the decree and to be followed uh, by the decree of the government to um, regulate all the new nuances um, and all those uh, matters and issues uh, which uh, might not be included into the law um, but the social entrepreneurship as uh, a new social lift not only for the young people but also for citizens of our country m- must be in place and this year I'm sure should be the year of um, when we can um, be uh, maximum effective uh, thank you very much Um, you represent uh, um, um, educational institution, and uh, seven years ago we started uh, um, uh, the experience of uh, of uh, Monterey and uh, Mexico, um, and it was quite a curious experience. In every subsidiary, they have their own incubator, and the requirement: 200 hours of social projects. If you don't do it, you are uh, you will be deprived of your diploma. So, sort of uh, soft uh, enforcement. Um, so. Um, you can do it uh, in uh, whatever way you want, but you ha- you are obliged for this 200 hours of volunteers. I think it's uh, uh, it- it's done in um, a state university. So we started a little bit later. That's why we will uh, use the 10 minutes um, uh, to give an opportunity um, to f- uh, finish our discussion about um, uh, the three cases and uh, about the system, how it should fly, and it would be great to hear the cases of social projects in uh, the youth um, sphere, and I would um, give the floor to uh, the vice champions um, of uh, accelerators, uh, Ms. Anna Kurbanova. Please um, share with us why you are doing it in your uh, age, because the students have so many other opportunities. Why social projects? Why you were charged with it? What's the social lift for you and the target audience you are uh, working with? Um, good evening, everybody. I am I, Anna from Rostov and Don, and I am the captain of the, uh, the um, project team, uh, the capital of the youth. So what it is in our understanding, it's a business uh, which uh, pays um, uh, off, uh, but it helps the unprotected uh, categories of population. So uh, we are talking about the target audience who need the help, but our team um, is instructed by the principle that every project of ours Uh, is uh, sustainable economically. Some projects uh, are self uh, um, uh, paying, uh, some using grants um, as support. Uh, or, for instance, a graduate, um, um, uh, the graduate of our team, Maria Tikhanova, she started with a grant uh, in her project. And he um, raised one million of investments, I think even more. And further on, she opened up her own um, uh, social enterprise, automated it uh, with um, blind people uh, operating there. They are using clay um, for um, producing goods and um, uh, show, um, uh, conducting master classes for usual people. And thus, they um, uh, they can pay back. And they have, of course, uh, some expenses. But uh, uh, in the recent court, uh, quarter, Uh, it was 56,000 uh, of expenses and 83,000 of um, um, of revenues. Uh, so the social enterprise um, has an opportunity for earning money for the blind people who um, conduct uh, and hold their master classes and um, uh, the masters uh, um, in um, clay production. So they, uh, please um, come to uh, Rostov and Don to our um, uh, workshop. Um, speaking about the social um, entrepreneurship and social lift, our project team uh, exists for six years um, and I became the captain uh, this year and I know the experience of my colleagues um, practically and many people um, come um, uh, f- uh, came to the social sector from uh, social entrepreneurship and one of my colleagues works here in Moscow in the government. Some other colleagues uh, work in the territories and regions in uh, Rostov and Don. I myself uh, am planning to work in the Ministry of Education and I continue my project um, to uh, help and support the orphanages and our project team covers um, a big number of 
uh, target audiences, uh, uh, the disabled people and the people with um, partially blind um, or um, and uh, the orphans. Uh, my project is um, about orphans. Social entrepreneurship is an excellent opportunity and a, a great way to develop your competences uh, to improve um, your level of revenues and uh, well um, why not because uh, speaking about myself for instance uh, after um, um, after having some competences in social entrepreneurship I managed to start up my own small business not in social entrepreneurship but still uh, it um, became an impetus which um, allowed me to improve my competences uh, to start up my own business to implement it further on besides everything else I uh, still um, doing my orphanages project there were a lot of things said here that the social entrepreneurship is uh, um, um, business of the heart and it is um, identified with charity and volunteership. My subjective opinion is that I disagree with the fact, uh, but not 100%, maybe 80% only, well, uh, my disagreement um, goes for, uh, well, volunteership, well, I think I would better in, in interpret it as a resource, as a resource, because a volunteer to become a social entrepreneur uh, should uh, have uh, some leadership skills um, and not um, just performing uh, because volunteer, of course, it's it's all very important and they're cool guys, of course, uh, but um, social entrepreneurship and volunteership uh, are two different things. And about charity, um, also, I would say, uh, speaking about the funds and um, NGOs, as a rule, it's uh, it means support, which is rendered um, financially while uh, they um, buy things thanks for orphanages and uh, brought it down there. But to render really high quality uh, support to um, disabled or uh, unprotected categories, you have to build up a social model in your enterprise for it to really operate. And I agree uh, with my colleagues uh, who said that um, social business um, uh, is not earning, but they have to learn how to earn money uh, in it. Our team um, exercises this ideology. And this is the only way I think we can help uh, the unprotected um, uh, categories of people. When you uh, exactly know what you want, what kind of money you will earn, and uh, what kind of money you can provide to the people and uh, teach them to uh, earn. Well, um, very good um, uh, knowledge uh, provided by the Southern uh, Russian University. It's the Urals now. It's the Urals um, uh, University of uh, of Renepa. Uh, please share your opinions. My name is uh, Anna Loginek. Um, I am um, a team member of uh, social entrepreneurship. We are. Um, doing uh, such projects uh, and we are uh, doing it for the fourth year running but with very good results and we participate in the race accelerator. Last year we were number one there and went to Portugal um, for um, internship. Uh, two years ago uh, we went to Armenia um, uh, we now have a great partner, which uh, is a, a store of goods. Um, our pipeline of projects has projects which help very different target audiences. One of them, one of the most successful, is the, the Granny Scarlet um, uh, project, where we uh, helped the uh, aged um, ladies who were knitting uh, their um, uh, very beautiful um, Thanks, and we were selling them uh, in the framework of our um, town, then went up to the all Russian um, level, and now we are doing it at the eBay with one of our partners uh, based in Moscow. Uh, as for the fact whether the social entrepreneurship is really a social lift for the team uh, team member uh, for the team members and the so and the target audience we are communicating with our target audience um, to uh, realize that for them our projects mean a lot uh, and thanks to them they get not only get to fish but uh, the fishing aid and they learn how to earn and in the future for them it allows them to upgrade their level of um, income. For us students, uh, the social entrepreneurship, of course, is a social lift. Um, initially, we 
we are changing our position in uh, in uh, the community of the students of the first and second year. We are acquiring some skills uh, in the framework of the race accelerator, and then we create our own uh, um, entrepreneurship uh, projects. The Granis um, Garrett is um, independent business, and uh, with uh, our um, with a graduate of our team at as the head. Thank you very much. Um, our colleagues from Rostov and Ekaterinburg helped um, um, uh, prepared some gifts uh, for the speakers. That's exactly what those uh, target audiences uh, have performed or created themselves. And we will go to present them. And it, uh, thank you very much, Anna. Uh, we, it would be great to uh, hear the opinion of Oksana Beriseva and uh, the fund uh, Our Future recommended you. Mm. Good evening. Social entrepreneurship. Well, I'm not uh, very much mature. Um, a little bit more than a year is my experience. But what we did was very interesting for us. Social entrepreneurship, uh, to be quite candid, um, has become the most interesting thing I ever done in my life. I used to work in mass media and then went on maternity leave. And uh, moms um, sometimes uh, change uh, their mind and uh, wanted to do more. Um, uh, during spare time, because um, uh, not much time, not much spare time they have. Uh, it started with a small hobby. We were selling candles um, who were created by the disabled people at festivals, and it became clear that if we want to have really sustainable changes, because social entrepreneurship and its a goal, unfortunately, we didn't have the time to discuss it. And my colleague might mm, add, I mean, in my opinion, social entrepreneurship is creating sustainable changes in the lives of social groups. That's exactly what we are striving for, to make their life better. Uh, how can you be happy uh, if um, someone next to you doesn't have any opportunity to achieve uh, uh, the same? Uh, I mean, those uh, disabled people. Or, well, for me, it was um, um, uh, it was exactly the thing. So we were selling uh, th uh, those things in the markets, and it became clear that to sell more, we uh, need bigger uh, sales outlets. And uh, the idea was to go to retail, and I called my friends um, asking who um, have um, acquaintances um, uh, to sell um, candles, and, uh, they were, uh, and they were laughing at me, saying that I'm crazy because uh, who needs the cables, the candles? Uh, but now we're in the um, premium uh, retail segment, uh, which is uh, the toy dom, and very important thing is that, that when you start working with a business, uh, well, it was retail, they don't care uh, whether uh, the candles are produced by the disabled people. Well, uh, the most important thing is for the consumer to uh, select it. And when you are on the shelf uh, with uh, the US, Polish, or other um, uh, brands, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is quality. So we were so happy they're standing, selling in different uh, echo shops and looking at uh, our tables uh, with uh, the fund of our future, which is very useful. It's the business plan for the um, five-year horizon. And we thus realized that we cannot follow uh, the indicators we had planned and realized that the candles uh, and the packages uh, that's selling well uh, in the markets does not work in the supermarkets because uh, it's uh, the consumption is different. And it's clear that to sell today, you need a brand. And everybody, all major brands and corporations um, uh, decide that it's impossible uh, to sell something uh, designed by designers. If it's a freelance designer, you have to develop a brand. And to, uh, well, uh, usually it's, um, diff it's difficult and expensive because it's uh, market research. It's um, uh, And since we are social entrepreneurs and all doors are open today, that's exactly what the experts were talking about. So it's, uh, um, the support of the state, the government, the funds, and also of the institutions and the universities, not only of big state-owned, but a higher school of branding, which uh, trained the professionals in branding, they um, 
uh, accepted our projects and developed the brand. We decided to do it, but we didn't have money, of course. But uh, as you know, it, it is quite expensive. And we addressed the fund, uh, um, our future, and they supported our project. And today we already um, are in, uh, in different retail in Ozon also. And what I wanted to say uh, in this is that social entrepreneurship gave me an opportunity to feel more and um, um, in uh, the market uh, and sales. And it's extremely interesting to work uh, in the market conditions along with the big guys and big corporations um, um, to address uh, big brands and offer your um, goods as gifts, uh, thinking as to what you should do to earn money. That's interesting. That's cool. That's challenging. And I would recommend to everyone to um, start to, um, to try it in any way to start doing things uh, and not uh, postpone it till tomorrow. Start doing it today. Thank you very much, Shaksana. By the way, you mentioned the subject we didn't discuss. Um, we talked about a lot of uh, uh, funds. We, we mm, didn't uh, talk about the corporations, but at the uh, panel of uh, the St. Pete Forum, uh, it was discussed that it would be logical to um, reload uh, those programs to support um, uh, the social entrepreneurship uh, more because uh, the crowdsourcing is uh, more more important and useful. And that's um, uh, your um, exit or way out to uh, the, uh, those big retailers. And it's exactly the fact that it's it's not only the economic expediency, but but um, uh, uh, they let them uh, let you in on their shelves. But unfortunately, uh, we are running out of time, and it seems to me that. And what about the Q and A? Well, um, that's well. We don't have more time left today uh, for this session. But I think I what I would do is to uh, maybe do the uh, Q and A uh, backstage uh, because uh, we didn't uh, uh, have more time uh, allotted. So uh, to recap, uh, I would say that we've uh, made only one step uh, in, uh, in, uh, in. It's still sort of blurred with uh, social lifts and social entrepreneurship. It's um, we understand it better. But in any way, but still, we can see that there's something out there, and maybe uh, the growth of our mm, accelerates about 1,000 people a year. But still, we uh, did not cover all the students of Renap. And I hope very much that uh, in the nearest uh, uh, future, we will have more and more young people who will try to implement those social projects and to learn a lot. And we heard so much about learning and training and uh, how to do it um, in the right way, sustainably, and uh, this so called. Uh, effect for economics um, and we can uh, add um, uh, value and our, to our GDP a lot. So I would like to wish you success uh, and uh, mm, uh, let's um, hand out uh, the gifts, I mean the present, the presents which are the goods which were uh, created by uh, the people. And I would like to wish you that in a year's time at this forum to discuss very different numbers. Thank you very much.